Today's video is sponsored by our good friends at Famous Faces and Funnies located in Melbourne, Florida, as well as Docking Bay 94 located in Boca Raton, Florida, and Ian's Display Accessories, the best figure stands on the market, and EGS Expert Grading Services for your comic needs. Click on the links below and remember shipping is nationwide. Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Codename New to Vero 2. Hi, I'm your presenter, Shibu RU. Well, we're going to recap issue number 279 of Raha and we're continuing the Untold Tales featuring Snow Job. And indirectly, it's kind of paying homage to Special Missions issue number 20. With me being a native Floridian, this is the closest I ever want to get to Snow. Snow Job is such a beloved character. I'm hard pressed to find anybody that doesn't like him. Now with Hasbro being in Rhode Island, I bet everyone there sounds like Snow Job as a matter of fact. He has the distinction of being the first Snow specific character released back in 1983. And as we do with every recap, we look at the cover variants. And I gotta say all three are freaking amazing. Um, I actually got end up getting cover A and B. Yeah, low light is in this and we'll see as the story goes, but that's a really nice cover i also like the ri of course john royal and jug de skumar hitting a home run with that but man all three of these are pretty solid i really like them and as always we have larry hama in control but new artist dan shoning now pay attention to his art style it is it reminded me of an actual sunbow episode so as i'm going through let's just keep that in mind we begin this story in fictitious frozen land with a cobra squad led by a snow serpent, returning to their terradrome base. They dis return to discover that they've been a victim of an attack. What's going to be cool is seeing the very different versions of the snow serpents, but it seems that this particular version one is in charge. Now, besides a variety of characters, we're also going to see some cool vehicles that have gotten little quote-unquote screen time in both Marvel and IDW, such as the Cobra Ice Saber, Cobra Ice Snake, and of course, the iconic Wolf. It seems Cobra outnumbers the Joe's snow-related vehicles three to one. A televiper informs the snow serpent in charge that a small group of Joe's came in to extract Dr. Jen Tang, who is being held captive by Cobra, and in retreat managed to destroy much of the base along with two fire bats. Apparently, this Dr. Tang was kidnapped for being the foremost expert and geological formations in this area. So having someone like that is kind of vital when you have a pterodrome in the middle of a freezer. The Telebat also informs the Snow Serpent that yeah, while both of them are damaged, we could actually cannibalize one of them and repair this other fire bat. So he tells them to go ahead and do that. And then he rallies what remaining uh, squad that he has to go in pursuit of the Joes and try to recapture Dr. Tang. Now, even though we're only a few pages in, have you been paying attention to artist Dan Shoning's artwork? I mean, it really does feel like it's a Sunbow episode. But well, going back to our action, the Cobras begin their pursuit of the Joes. Up ahead, we catch up with our Joe team, led by Snow Job. They escaped in a Snowcat and a Dominator, as one Snowcat was destroyed in the invasion. Along with Snow Job, we have Low Light and Cover Girl in the Dominator, while Frostbite, Dr. Tang, Iceberg, and Blizzard are in the Snowcat. Again, Sholing's illustration of the characters. I mean, look at Low Light and Cover Girl. Excellent. I mean, Low Light look, even has his mullet. The Joes are some ways away from their landing zone, where a C-130 is awaiting, but they also know it's just a matter of time before Cobra catches up with them as their snow vehicles are faster and more maneuverable. Dr. Tang informs the Joes that she was abducted while giving a speech in Helsinki. Suddenly, Iceberg notices smoke coming out of the engine bay of the snowcat. A bullet nicked a fuel line and it was dripping fuel on the manifold. <laughs> they are freaking lucky that that thing didn't blow up or this story would have ended really quickly. This isn't good. The repair will take an hour according to Frostbite. 
And I think it's pretty cool to think that along with their specialties, these guys and gals have to be field medics and mechanics on the fly. Snowjob looks into his binoculars and notices a small snow cloud over the horizon. The Cobras are closing in. Now, ruling out a defensive position as they'll be sitting ducks and eventually overwhelmed, CoverGirl takes lead and decides to go on the offensive. She will take Blizzard and Frostbite and go and try to drive the Cobras away from Snowjob, Lowlight, and Dr. Tang. So with that, CoverGirl leads her team into battle. And you gotta tip your hat for CoverGirl for just, you know, going on the offensive when they're in the middle of nowhere. Meanwhile, back at the Terradrome, we have the typical Cobra bumbling as the AVAC pilot leads the Firebat repair. Now we get a snippet with the Snow Serpent version 2 mentioning how all AVAC pilots are a-holes. <laughs> And then going to the lead Snow Serpent, the version one that we saw earlier, we see him declaring how they are now closing in on the Joes and it will be just a matter of time before they apprehend the Doctor back. When suddenly, Iceberg and Blizzard, while on skis nonetheless, come out of nowhere and take out the trailing wolf. The leader Snow Serpent orders everyone to turn around and deal with these Joes. And as soon as he does, he's right in Cover Girl's sight line and she fires, knocking out the serpent's wolf, but he manages to escape. Now the battle and illustration of this is just amazing. I, I'm really enjoying this artwork. Cover Girl is utilizing guerrilla warfare tactics, which is smart to hit and run and keep the pursuit on them and away from Snow Job's repair job. That sounded funny. <laughs> the lead serpent yells at an ice viper. Why are you idling, you moron? Go after them and radios back to the Terradrome on the status of the Firebat, which he is told is 10 minutes away from being flight ready. Meanwhile, CoverGirl has another issue. Now, they lost most of their missiles in the Terradrome attack, so ammo is running really low. Meanwhile, it looks like Snowjob and Frostbite are making really good progress with the Snowcat. They take stock that CoverGirl's dealing with two wolves that are hot on her tail, and they decide to leave low light and the doctor behind while they fire up the snowcat and rush to cover girl's aid. Now with no missiles left, cover girl, blizzard and iceberg are down to small arms fire, which is useless thanks to the surface armor of the wolf. When suddenly a ski torpedo from the snowcat knocks out one of the wolves. At the moment, the odds have swung to the Joe's favor. Cover girl launches a kamikaze attack on the remaining wolf deeming it immobile, but she jumps out just in time. Iceberg tosses in few frags to finish the deal, but there's no time to celebrate the victory, as the AVAC pilot is flying into to lay down an avalanche of fire to finish off our Joes. With only one remaining missile on the snowcat, it's all or nothing. But the firing system got damaged, deeming the missile useless. It's a rush against time. Frostbite is frantically hot wiring the system. It's too late. As the AVAC pilot presses his trigger, only to have his missiles jam. Yeah, the missiles are not releasing. The Snow Serpent version 2 that he was yelling at at the Terradrome never bothered to double check the missiles. And just like that, the Joes dodge another bullet. Literally. Frostbite manages to hot wire the Snowcat and Snowjob fires away, blowing the fire bat out of the sky. See kids, don't be a dick. Thinking that it's smooth sailing from here on out, the Joes go back to pick up the doctor and low light, unknowing that the lead snow serpent has repaired his snow saber and is closing in fast. He knows from chatter that the Joes are without any missiles and basically are sitting ducks. Now, as soon as they mount up on the snow cat, Blizzard and Frostbite notice that Lowlight has disappeared. They know they can ill afford to wait for his return, and Frostbite sadly makes a decision to press on leaving Lowlight behind. But look at Lowlight. He actually spun off to position himself high on the cliff, and the Snow Serpent is saying to himself, he notices this, he's like, there's no way in hell that this guy can make this shot. It's impossible. I mean, I have this all to myself. When suddenly, bang! I mean, like, the dude gets assassinated, and that's a great illustration. And I think it's wonderful 
to see that. And this, in turn, gets the Joes out of this predicament because Lowlight is up there just picking off the lead snow serpent and his troops that he gathers and basically rescues the entire group from being caught. And I think this is a perfect end to this wonderful one-off mission. And we see the Joes finally approaching the drop zone in their battered and beaten um, snowcat. And then, you know, Lowlight's there, shows up. I guess he repaired the Dominator. And he's like, hey, what took you guys so long? And that's the end of this uh, mission. And I think this was great. I love these. And the artwork was phenomenal. Anyway, that's Shabu Are You for this recap of issue number 279. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.